Hello, my product. I do have a very interesting question. Now, it is believed that during the last election, Donald Trump ran on a white nationalism theme, and his such advisors as David Duke, Stephen Miller, um, Steve Bannon, are all people that believed in, and still perhaps still believe in a white nationalism theme. Also, one poll has it that 79% of white Christians, they call themselves um, evangelistics or, or something like that, voted for and support the white nationalism theme. But those are just Christians. There are other religions in the United States and there are other races in the United States. So how can anyone, how can an individual work towards stemming the tide of white nationalism? Well, first of all, you must know that Donald Trump never ever said, I am running on a white nationalism theme. Um, people believe that he was, but then other people would do the talking for him. Now, as for uh, white Christians and the 79 percent that voted for Donald Trump on the white nationalism theme, well, you got to understand, you are correct. There are other races in the United States, and there are other religions, and they're agnostics, and they're atheists. And these people, quite frankly, don't necessarily embrace white nationalism. They're not fascists. So, the question is, how does one, how can an individual help in stemming the seemingly tide of white nationalism? Well, there are a lot of things the individual can do. First of all, you've got to be aware. You've got to pay attention. What may seem like a patriotic act or words that seem to be words of patriotism are not. So you've got to pay attention and be aware of everything around you and everyone around you. Secondly, to follow up on that being aware and paying attention, you've got to know your symbols. Now, on the back of the trucks, we used to have the Confederate flag and we used to have the Nazi flag and those symbols are pretty blatant. We know, I think everyone knows what those symbols are all about. Now, of course, you have things like restore the Constitution. This, per perhaps, is something that you've got to be aware of. Um, when the Constitution was written, black people were not considered human beings. They're certainly not considered uh, part of the American uh, landscape anyway. So black people were property. They were not people at all. So when you see a, in the back of a pickup truck, restore the Constitution, this is a new white nationalism, a new white nationalism bumper sticker. There are a lot of others. Um, crosses and different sort of arrangements to um, mean the Christian support of white nationalism. So what, just because you see a cross or a Christian symbol, you really should know what it means. Okay, the third point I want to make is church and their influences. We already talked about the evangel evangelicals, um, which are in basically Christians. So when you go to church, you ought to listen very carefully as to what your minister is saying, because that's where... It all starts. Donald Trump got his support from churches. Don't forget that. That's where the majority of his support came from. So if you belong to a church and you're a person of conscience, a person who care about stemming the tide of, national, of uh, racism, listen carefully. Churches who preach hate, churches that are um, anti-gay, churches who are anti-black. They will almost always preach Paul. The Apostle Paul is what they will almost always use because they find justification in Paul. Churches who do not 
will usually preach Jesus. They will preach the words and deeds of Jesus. That's the difference. The other point is, my fourth point, is that you have got to be politically aware. You've got to be politically savvy to know that what you're supporting is not, in fact, white nationalism. You have got to be educated enough to know that. My fifth point is this. Vote with your dollar bills. Make it your business to know what corporations support racism, white nationalism. And you can know that by knowing, looking at the top structure of that corporation. How many women, how many minorities, how many African Americans are in management positions? And that's very easy to, to find out. Look at their board of directors and look at where their financial support is going. That's a very good indicator of the corporation's intent and their support for racism. Look at the candidates that they support financially. My sixth point is that you really need to be objective and take a very good look at your friends, your relatives, and your peers because that's where you're going to have your strongest influence. Listen to their conversation. How do they talk about black people? How do they talk about Hispanics and gays and about women? And finally, your news source. You have got to be able to read facts and truth. If you have to, Read the foreign newspapers if you want to know what is really happening here in the United States. you got to understand that over 90% of the news media is owned by only 16 men. And they're all white conservatives. So, people who work for them, if they want to keep their job, had better write in such a way as to support the owner's political beliefs. So you don't always get the truth and quite often what you get that passes off of facts and truth is incomplete. Okay? Remember, the news is in support of advertisers and in support of the owners of the media. So, read foreign newspapers if you have to, but by all means, get the, find the truth. Get the facts. But, by the way, that's a very good question. Thank you very much for asking.